Thank you, President Zhang Rong, Mr. Zhu Jalu, friends. I would like to begin by thanking the organizers of the Nishan Forum for bringing us together, our different experiences, insights, our questions, our ways of seeing the world. And over the past four days, this forum has given us a space to speak with and listen to one another, to exchange ideas, and to crystallize and enrich our thinking about the progress of civilization. I have learned much from this experience, and for this I am truly grateful. No doubt, our collective experience here will inform and shape our thinking as we return home and continue to work for the betterment of the world in our respective countries and communities, conscious of the common vision and aspirations that bind and inspire us. In these closing remarks, I would like to offer some reflections on the central theme of this forum, namely our pursuit of an ethic that can guide the people of the world in this period of history, a period characterized by a growing awareness of our interconnectedness, of our shared destiny as members of one human race. The desire to express a universal ethic for our global village and to connect our lives meaningfully to the community of humanity as a whole is deeply felt by growing numbers of people around the world. The question before us is of human flourishing. How can we organize our local, national, and global communities in a way that will enable human civilization to flourish socially, culturally, technologically, materially, and ethically? This is, of course, a question that has occupied countless minds throughout the ages. At every stage, we have been challenged to balance a concern for ourselves and our own interests with concern for the well-being and happiness of others. Time and again, the great philosophers and teachers have raised before eyes the implication of that moral precept, sometimes referred to as the golden rule. Do not do to others what we would not want others to do to us, Confucius declared millennia ago. Over 2,000 years later, Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i Faith, echoed these words, saying, if thine eyes be turned towards justice, choose thou for thy neighbor that which thou choosest for thyself. Thousands of years of intellectual and social history and the moral and ethical development that have been achieved over that span have brought us to the point where we can gather here today to explore, to imagine, and to articulate the elements of an ethic that will promote human flourishing. The possibility of a truly global conversation has for the first time appeared on our horizon. Not only can we see our physical unity represented in stirring photographs of our planet, but we have developed the technologies which make conversations about the contours of our shared future together possible. We are, for the first time, part of a global conversation, learning together what it means to be human. At the same time, even as we come together to pray, pay tribute to the principles of justice, respect, and ethical behavior, we cannot ignore the fact that the voices of the masses of humanity are not yet part of this conversation. With limited scope for action and agency to play their full role in shaping the course of our common destiny. And as such, we have much to learn. To be sure, we are encountering some very difficult lessons along the way. We see revolutionary changes taking place in every sphere of human life, 
And in these changes, two fundamental processes can be discerned. One is destructive in nature, tearing apart those structures, attitudes, and habits that while possibly useful in the past, now stand in the way of human flourishing. The other integrative is slowly laying the foundations for new patterns of human relationships. Yet, each in its own way carries us on the path to greater maturity and understanding. The processes of disintegration are apparent everywhere. In the environmental crisis, the exploitation of women and children, the persistence of corruption, the impotence of leaders and institutions to mend the fractures in the structure of society, in the extremes of wealth and poverty, and in the despair and indifference of entire societies that have lost a sense of hope. At the same time, we witness the sweeping integration, drawing diverse groups together, forging a sense of world citizenship, and opening new opportunities for cooperation and collaboration. To an extent unimaginable just a few decades ago, wars between nations are becoming more rare. Great progress has been made in taming discrimination against other human beings on a basis of difference alone. Millions have been lifted out of poverty. Advancements in science have opened an, of undreamed of possibilities for the enhancement of human life. It seems that the threshold has been crossed, fundamental principles have been identified, articulated, and are gradually being given expression through individuals, communities, and social institutions throughout the world. It is clearer than ever that our reality as human beings is one that is deeply rooted in relationships, in our relationship with fellow human beings, within the family, the community, the nation, the global community, with the natural environment, and for many of us, with the notion of God or of heaven or transcendence. These relationships place on each of our shoulders responsibilities and duties. These in turn, which shape the dynamics of reciprocity and cooperation that give vitality and meaning to our relationships. The emphasis on the relational nature of human life and on human duties and responsibilities as expressed so eloquently in Confucian thought remains vital to our life. For Baha'is, the principle that today is to infuse all facets of organized life is that of the oneness of mankind. While on its surface, this principle appears simple enough, in practice, its implications are far-reaching and profound, challenging us to imagine and create a community which has not existed in the history of human race. The principle of the oneness of mankind asks not merely for cooperation and goodwill, it challenges us to rethink and reconceptualizes and reconceptualize the relationships that have defined our society. Those relationships based on adversarialism, on domination, on exploitation, on discrimination, on dishonesty, on ignorance, or the like. The principle of the oneness of humanity calls for an organic change in the very structure of society, in the establishment of new patterns of human life and human interaction based in understanding, unity in diversity, mutualism, and cooperation. How will such a change come about? I don't think any of us knows in detail the answer to that. What we do know is that each of us bears a measure of responsibility. All human beings, wrote the founder of the Baha'i Faith, have been created to carry forward an ever-advancing civilization. 
The common ethic that we must construct must be one that enables each person, every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl to recognize this responsibility, to bear the weight that it places on their shoulders, and to be enabled to make their unique contribution to the advancement of the whole. As we go forth from this conference, let us embrace that sense of responsibility with the inspiration and insight we have gained in the course of the past few days. And be prepared to exercise it with greater wisdom and faith. Thank you.